So today we have the divine Liz, who I've kidnapped. I did my last video on her daughter, Bianca, and her mum was here and I just kept eyeballing you off. Sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't giving your daughter attention, but I, beautiful. Burmese, is that your? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And she claims that she's 60. Full. I don't believe her, but apparently 64. So what we are going to do today is I want to do like a really simple full makeup that you can do under time pressure. I find the internet is flooded with amazing step-by-step -step makeups, but 50 steps two hours later, we don't always have that time. So I want to do something that's really quick, really impactful. All I've done to start is my cellar water, which I do all the time, a cellar water. And what's really important is to make sure there's no oil on the eyelids. Okay, I'm gonna use cream eyeshadows today. Cream gives me speed, less fallout, and they're more waterproof. Because I'm gonna use cream eyeshadows and have no fallout, I'm gonna do the foundation first. I do love this primer. This is the Dermalogica one. And this has a sunscreen in it too. Now I know that we are definitely not shooting outside today, but it's just like a nice habit. And any parts of the skin where I find out we've got a little bit more of open pores, I actually add a little bit more to that area because it acts like a really good filler. And I always like to put some lip balm on nice and early in the makeup. This is a great one. It's for any mums out there that have done breastfeeding, you may have been introduced to this product. Um, it's actually nipple cream for crack nipples if boys out there are wondering what is that for? It's pure lanolin. So I like to soften the lips while I'm doing makeup. With skin tone with Liz, I always look at the skin as a total. Now, like I say in most makeups that I do, that the neck is normally slightly paler because it's blocked by the sun. So that's why I don't match to the jawline. Because what you'll end up doing is you can lighten the face. So I'm going to match here to here. And I can see that she's actually got about two shades different. So what I'm going to do for one, I don't always do this. I'm going to choose a color that's in between. This is the banana Chantecaille. I'm just going to go really sheer. I'm putting it on thick so you can see the color tone. So in the morning, we're in a hurry. This is the reason I designed this little baby, number 28. So close your eyes and you just do this. And what I love about this application, you can be doing this while you're talking to someone. Um, cover your lips for me, come on. Mm, let's see. And it feels, even though I'm being aggressive, it feels really soft, doesn't it? Mm. Okay. With a brush like this, you should do your foundation in less than 60 seconds. This polishing technique, it makes all foundation look airbrush. So even if you like a lot of coverage, this will get it into the skin. Okay, I'm not going to over under the eye. We're going to go straight into eyes. Now I'm going to show you a really good trick. You might need to do this technique once or twice to know the position of your eye makeup, but once you know it, it's there for you forever. So here's a really great trick. To make your eyes look lifted, look straight into the mirror. So if you can go eye level there for me, Kim. Okay, so a lot of people, me included, have this overhang here. When, we're, when we have um, eyes through our teenagers and when we're younger, we actually have what I call, you have lash line, you'll always have a little bit of a gap of your lid and then your socket appears here. So there'll always be lash, gap for lid, socket. As we get older, this drops down and we lose that. So what I'm going to do is apply it and literally reconstruct the socket. Using Dennis and Merrick's, this cream palette, I'm gonna be using this gray color here. And the other color I'm gonna use, I use this all the time. So it's cream, it's waterproof. They do crease a little bit, but I don't mind that. And there's some warm colors and cool colors. And because we're gonna use cool grays today, I'm gonna to take a little bit of this bottom color here, the back of my hand. These are both cool tones. Really simple trick. I want you to take a pointed eye brush this is my 7.6 and just choose, I'm going to use two colours today, a lighter grey and a grey. And with yourself looking straight ahead, I want you to give yourself a false socket. Because remember, a more youthful, well not even youthful, a more lifted eye will be lifted when there's gap between the lashes and the brow bone. I hope that makes sense. This is the hardest part, people, hardest part. And it's really important to do it looking straight into it, to a mirror or a camera. So on the other eye, my number, is that 11? 
this little baby, microcrystal fiber. So all I'm doing is the color that I just put on before, I'm just taking a tiny bit of it, smudging, there's hardly any of it on my brush, and I'm just gonna blend it. Now, here's the easy part. So I'm now gonna take my gray color on that same brush, number 11. And this is a great trick if you're at home. If I was doing this on myself, I put my head back in the mirror and I tilt the brush on this angle. And what that does, it keeps the color close to the eyelids. If you do it this way, you can flick eyeshadow everywhere. Chin back, Liz, and eyes to your knees. If you're a makeup artist, the best place, oh, I'll give you that back. Best place for your model or client to look at is at their knees. What's really good about this technique, I've already got my stencil. I know that I'm just gonna put this color on and blend it up to that shape that I've already pre-done. What I do is I take it slightly underneath and then I'll pick up a clean brush to blend. So that's what I was saying, sorry if I block anyone at home there, but this is what I mean by turning your brushes upside down. I just never recommend lifting the eye when you're trying to create the shape that you want because you are distorting how the eye is going to look in the end. I'm going to use brush number, just a smaller point. So pretty much this whole eye is done with three brush sizes. You can actually even use two. So I'm taking the same colour. This has got point technology. Those points will stay like that for you. Okay. And all, just gently close. Now, I don't normally let my models close because see how the eye wrinkles a little bit. I'm getting the same grey again and just look up a little bit for me. And I'm just going to intensify just the outer third. Blink as much as you like, Liz. You're doing really well. And look straight into the camera again. And I'm just going to create a letter C. Just drawing that top socket into that bottom. And all I'm doing here is creating a little bit of an eye fi shape and making her eyes look bigger than what they are. Blink as much as you want. This is that brush we had earlier. And all you want to make sure, any color from the nose to the corner, you just want to take it out. See what I'm doing there? Because when we get that fold, we accidentally can put eyeshadow down too low. That's a nice way just to keep that lifted shape. You can just use the same foundation as concealer if you want to. Sometimes it's enough. And if that foundation isn't enough, we're going to use some concealer. Now, again, um, I love these. I like under the eyes. I don't like anything that's too thick um, or drying. So I do find cream concealers the best. So a couple of my favorite, Trini, has amazing concealers. This is the HD Makeup Forever. IT Cosmetics. NARS have a great one in there. What's really uh, lovely about Liz's skin, she has a little bit of darkness but she doesn't have those deep deep creases so all I need to do is just lighten this area here and a really great trick is lighten that area just in there. I don't put too much product in this part of the eye, smile for me, because smile really hard, see it's hard to believe that she's over 60 but a lot of people like myself, we get really lined there and if you put too much product, it just creases all the time. So I like, to, you can relax there now. So I just like to put concealer in areas where the skin doesn't move too much. So brows is one of those things, there's two ways that you do it. When I do my own, I actually get, I use the Benefit Brow Mascara and just comb them up. So brow mascara is a fantastic if you've got a bit of hair. There's another great thing that's really quick to use. These are the Stila All Day Waterproof Brown Color, Brow Color. Um, that's really good. And all I'm going to do for a quick brow is just put a few strands in. It's so one thing, if you can find a great brow artist, find one and keep them in your life forever. Great. Now, on the eyelids, you can leave that color, put your mascara on, off you go. If you don't want it to look that shiny, you can just get a little bit of eyeshadow and just press it into the lid. So look down for me. So I love that creaminess. I don't mind that little bit of creasiness. If you don't like it, smooth it out. And then just get an eyeshadow that's lighter than the color you used. I'm gonna use like a pinky gray. Always go lighter. Okay, so using this one here, you can just do a soft gray. Look down. I'm just not putting anything that's got a lot of shimmer on it. And the reason I go lighter in color theory, there's a rule. Color on color goes darker. So what I mean, if you have, um, if I put a, a medium gray, medium gray on top of what's there would go a little bit darker. 
This is 11.1. It's a nice sort of squovely brush. Um, it's a nice one for the lids. It has a nice rounded edge. I don't love using glittery, shimmery products on everybody. I think they're pretty and they're cute, but sometimes the shimmery glitter, glitter shim, the shimmery glitter can age the skin. It can highlight wrinkles. I always say, if you're unsure, take the shimmer product that you're dying to use, and excuse the back of my hand, but on the back of your hand, rub them and then move them in the light. And I can see that my lines on my hand look so much more obvious with that shimmer. So. If you're obsessed with shimmer, just be really careful where you use it. In Liz's case, I could use it on that little bit of inner corner because her eye doesn't crease there. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this one. Why is that for me? I just don't do it on everybody. And I just want it subtle. Now, cheek and lip, really simple. So I love these products. I'm about to pop it in front of you. This is called Munchkin. This is from Trini. And um, what I like to do with lip colors is I can see on Liz's lip, she's got a natural lip color edge and a paler she's got like she's got a little bit of lip line i actually really like that so what i want to do is even that lip tone out i'm going to do the same on the cheeks this is my new so this is number one um this is now the micro crystal fiber so think of it like um as soft as blue squirrel but it's i don't like using the word synthetic because people think synthetic means cheap it does it's actually more expensive it's got the hair like a goat it's got the cuticle but it's vegan so the hair itself is stronger than natural fiber but feels softer and i mimicked um goat hair so the great thing about that natural hair brushes as you know it can be inconsistent because one animal to another it does change and i've always wanted to be vegan this the technology wasn't there but now we have um patented micro crystal fiber and our brushes, our point ones have point technology in them. But this color is beautiful. And you can see I haven't gone in and covered pigment and her skin has this beautiful natural texture to it. There is a little bit of a pigment there. I, I think the skin looks more youthful having it sheer and seeing it than covering it. I, that's just what I like. You can cover it if you want. Um, I, I think it looks beautiful, you know, seeing it. So it's just giving us, and like you can just rub it on with your finger. Fingers are sometimes really nice, you get a nice smudgy look. And what I like about lip to cheek products, they're more staining, so they tend to stay on closer. Just close them, too. They tend to stay longer. Yeah, okay, so now I've got that on, I'm going to change that color. I sometimes do this and it's really good. So what I'm finding is it's making, this look quite a bit too dark. I like it in the middle, so don't be afraid to do this. I think good artists are the ones that go, that's not working, can we try something else? Um, in my earlier years, I'd never admitted it. I would have just tried to convince the poor lady that I loved it because I was too embarrassed to say that I didn't make the right decision. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use that same color, but I'm gonna use it more in the center. Oh, open for me. I'm gonna use this in the middle. And then we're going to use a lighter one. So this one is uh, I Need a Nude, Jennifer. This is Natasha Denona. When you're getting a lipstick, best way to test it is on your fingertip. Can I have the back of your finger? Can you hold it up, Liz, to the camera? The back of your finger like that? Yeah. So when you're buying a lipstick, just do one or two wipes, and that will give you an idea of how the color's going to look on your mouth. Because back of your hand, that's not your lip color, and that is closer to your lip tones. Now, this is brand new. So because it's brand new, I'm going to use it from the bullet, and it's going to be a gift for her. So. Don't worry about hygiene, because I would never do this if I was reusing that lipstick. So let me have a look. Yeah, nice. I like it. You need, this is really good, so I needed to get that berryness in the middle. But what I want to do, just do a little fake smile. So what I want to do, guys, I just want to even out her tone. I just found the edge, that theory, color on color goes darker. I just want to even it out now, so. This is gonna, you can just see now, if you relax your lip there, it just looks like a beautiful, even lip color. And just the same foundation. I'm not gonna put highlight and shine. Her skin has a natural hydration. And if your skin's really hydrated, it will just shine beautifully in natural light. 
So I'm not going to put shimmer. I think that's where makeup can just start to look a little bit makeup y. But the only thing I want to do, last point of the day, I just want to darken around the hairline. Um, again, as an artist, whatever foundations you use, I always make sure you always know the colour you're using, but always have on standby one that's one lighter and one that's a shade darker, just so you can manip manipulate or change the skin tone. So, this is the number 23. So this will go, it's like a pointer brush, two things, use it for contouring, she has incredible cheeks, but I love darkening, especially if you've got a deeper skin tone, I really want to darken this part of the skin. Now these little things you can, like I said, if I, if I recap, foundation, big brush all over. You don't have to deepen the area, if you want to, you can. Contouring. You don't have to. I'm just going to do a little bit of it just in here. But I'm going to contour someone who's got really big, beautiful cheeks. I don't cut through the cheek because it cuts the face in half. It looks weird. I contour. Instead of going all the way through, I just pull it back just here. And you don't, again, you have to do this bit if you don't want to. You don't need it. She's got a natural contour anyway. So a little bit of a brow, the eye. And all you need to do is put a mascara on. So this whole makeup should take, honestly, 10 minutes. Foundation, a minute. Use the foundation under the eyes. Brows, that depends on Some brows are natural, bit of gel, you're done. Um, learn to do your brows fast. They're the hardest and the most important thing. Brows, eye, you should do that in two minutes. Once you get your shape, use cream. There is no fallout to worry about. You can use your finger for lip to cheek if you want to, or a brush. Mascara, done. You have an extra few minutes, you go, oh, I want to go a little bit further, or you want to freshen up during the day. This is a really nice trick, ladies. How's that for me? If you're at work during the day, you're feeling a bit tired. When you get tired, this inner waterline just gets more red. This is by a face liner by Crayolin. Look what that does, it opens them up. Mascara and done. This is one that I bought in um, Japan. I love it. So metal comb. This actually has now been upgraded. We've added, I think I've got the new one here. I'll be doing my brush videos this week anyway, so you can see. So I've actually added that to that. So you have both of them in there now. Metal comb. Once you use this, you'll never use a wand again. Now you can curl them first if you want to. Um, her lashes are quite short and they just have a little bit of a natural comb. You're allowed to blink like that. That's okay. And only look to me. So as an artist, guys, bring it down because if you say look to me and you're standing up, you know what's going to happen. You've got long lashes and you stand up and have a chat. Guess what, people? It's all going to get through the top eyelid. Okay. And this is it. You can do a bottom mascara as well. You don't have to. And just for fun, um, lip gloss. It's a beautiful one. It is a kind of bronze temptation. And if I'm going to put a gloss on, I just put it in the middle, mainly just here. And soften the edge and we are done during the day if you get shiny I just grab my powder so this is my brush number 10 you can use like a kabuki brush so this is my clear invisible powder and all I'm going to do to show you how this works if you don't like the shine it's invisible can work on all skin tones it's undetectable to a camera lens and see I'll just see how it just kicks that sheen away without looking powdery it lasts at least double the time as any powder. It's called the Invisible Mattifier. So I'm going to be back with a finished result. I'm just going to do her hair quickly.